Thomas Jefferson's personal copy. We're talking a lot of money. I'd probably put a price at $75,000. 47 and I am... 50000 I have a media right. My guess, this comes from Argentina. Which I'll give you five grand. I'm at seven. <sighs> well, this is going to be the centerpiece of your store. It's not original. It's not signed. I thought, well, maybe we should also take the shirt you're wearing to the gun range. It's a contemporary piece. It's no signature. We don't know the artist. You can't sell something for thousands and thousands of dollars where you don't even know the artist. Jeff brings in a mini sculpture. Rick asks what it is, and Jeff explains that it is an original artwork made by James Earl Fraser. What in the world is this? Usually I bring you coins, but uh, this is coin related. Hey! Made by James Earl Fraser for the Buffalo Nickel. This is original artwork. I brought you some nickels so that you can refresh your memory about what coin we're talking about. Rick talks about how the nickel coin came into existence. The nickel before this one had a lady with her hair in her bunk. It's pretty boring. <laughs> a few years after Teddy Roosevelt became president and said, like, guys, we have the ugliest coins in the world. Yeah. It is one of the most beautiful coins we ever had. Rick asks if he knows how many of these sculptures exist, and Jeff tells him it was just that one. Rick then asks how much he wants for it. It is totally unique. Do you know how many of these exist? Just that one. How much you want for it? I would part with it for twenty thousand dollars. It's really museum quality. So what about ten? I would sell it for eighteen. It's plaster of Paris yeah. is not made to last. Fifteen, that'd be it. I think I'll pass. Um, Maybe next time. This should be on a coin. Really. Earlier today, I had a guy come in with the silver spoons made by Paul Revere. Called in my buddy Dana to authenticate it. Paul Revere spoon? There are a lot of fakes and reproductions. Everything looks like it could be old, but I'm not going to put out money until I know. Expecting the spoon, one has to look at the patina, the coin silver, braving of the decoration, the hallmark punch that's on the back. The expert confirms that the spoon is authentic. It's original. The patina is lovely. It doesn't appear to be fake. Really nice decoration with the initial PK. Looking at your punch mark was made by Paul Revere. The expert begins inspecting the spoon more closely, and it turns out to be authentic, but there's still a complication. When inspecting the spoon, one has to look at the hallmark punch to make certain it's absolutely authentic. This looks good. Done by Paul Revere. There were two Paul Revere's. You know that. Paul Revere Jr., the famous Paul Revere. After taking one last look at the spoon, it turns out to be the real deal, and it is worth a lot. I brought this monograph called Paul Revere Goldsmith. Different designs of known hallmarks used by Paul Revere Sr. and Paul Revere Jr. Nice and clear. It's really nice and sharp. All of the fonts match up. It's the real deal done by Paul Revere Jr. What's it worth? Twelve to eighteen thousand dollars. Like you. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, Dana. What do you want for it? Fifteen grand. Seven grand cash. Tap dance a little bit here. We take nine grand for it. Ninety-five, and you got a deal. All right, ninety-five hundred. Let's go do some paperwork. This seller brought in a pinball machine to sell. How in the hell did you get this through my door? Very carefully. 1972 Williams Line Drive baseball pinball machine. The owner tells him what he wants from it. I'll do 3500 What would you say to 4000 3750 You got a deal. Deal? All right, Thank cool. you, sir. This man is here to sell a couple of prints of Norman Rockwell. I'll sell a couple of my Norman Rockwell prints. He states his price for this item. The least I would take 5000 a piece. He shows Rick the other prints, and Rick adds that these items could go for a lot of money. The other print we have dressing up, and there was only 60 of these made. This is really neat. These can go for a lot of money. Rick asks how much the seller wants for these items. When people mention American artists, the very first people they think of, Norman Rockwell. No one expressed American culture like him. How much do you want for these? 8,000 a piece. I'll give you like 4,500 bucks for it. How about 7,000? I'll tell you what, I'll go 4,800. Could you go 55? I'll go five. All right, I'll take 5,000. All right, sweet. He needs to resell them and make a profit, so I'm happy with it. Holy grail of all championship rings. 2004 Boston Red Sox World Series ring. No way. He states the price of the ring and also explains why he wants to sell it. I'm hoping to get $89,000. I'd like to sell the ring today just to free up some money and maybe put it on a down payment for a house. He told Corey that he got this from a sports memorabilia dealer in Boston. A sports memorabilia dealer in Boston. Yeah, this is the quintessential true baseball. I mean, Boston sports area sports thing. <laughs> Exactly. Ring belonged to Brandon Puffer. I know that it's one of 51 player rings. How much do you want for the ring? Well, I'd like $89,000 for it. Typically on something like this, I'd offer you around 60 grand. You have one huge problem with this ring, that it's a Brandon Puffer. 
And this guy has quite the reputation. He was sent to prison for intent of sexual assault, a felony. Let me give you my argument. It's still a player's ring. I look at it as, all right, here's a guy. Obviously, he had his off-field problems. When I put on his ring, I feel, wow, this guy, he's turning his life around. That, I don't know. Yeah, he gets out in 2014. But at the end of the day, if this had anybody else's name on it, I would offer you 60 grand for it. It's just that ring right there is probably the one Red Sox ring from 04 that's not worth any money. Brett calls Rick to meet Jimi Hendrix's photographer, who is willing to sell the artist's photographs. I just got a call from my artist expert Brett. So I'm going to Brett's gallery to check it out. Ron came in with these vintage Jimi Hendrix photographs. How in the world did you get photos like this? I was Jimmy's photographer. How did you get a gig being Jimi Hendrix's photographer? Oh, I went on an audition and he chose me. One of the things I find most amazing about Jimi Hendrix is he was only on the American rock scene for two years, changed rock and roll. And since he died so young, his memorabilia is huge. Rick asks Brett for his opinion, which clarifies a few concerns and values the photographs at thousands of dollars. All right, so these are all from the original negatives and the... Yeah, I don't recognize any of these images of, of this having ever been published. What I'd really like to do is be able to put a lot of these in my store. I mean, I think they would sell like hotcakes. I'm gonna pick out a stack of what I think are the best images and make them an offer. What do you think photos like this would go for? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions, Ron? Certainly. Okay. Are they a limited edition, or are they an open edition, or do you know? It's an open yet? edition size okay. print. Do you have like a certificate of authenticity that you're doing that documents the, the process? Very good, right there. You know, nicely framed, maybe even a little placard kind of documenting the concert. Twelve to fifteen hundred dollars. The heated negotiations begin. Let's see where it goes. Normally, what galleries do is they take things on consignment, and they generally get a really large discount. I'll tell you what, I'll give you, for this pile right here, I'll give you $10,000. These are worth at least 20. What about 12? 18. Hey, I, I'm really seeing like 14,000. It's my heart and soul, come on. 15. You got a deal. All right. It's the Mercedes Unimog. Yeah, I thought it was a car. <laughs> I would love to get something like $22,000. The Germans used to hide in the wood listening to the Russians. It was very, very versatile. These trucks are really cool. It's meant to be off-road. They are originally designed to be used on farms. The seller shows the engine of the vehicle to Rick. Later, an expert is called over to figure out the price of this Mercedes. <laughs> And it's an old Mercedes motor, but it looks in good shape. I don't see any leaks. The Unimogs are cool. It can drive through anything. Figuring out a price is going to be tricky. Rick Test drives the Mercedes Unimog alongside the expert. I would like to get 22000 I got to figure out what this thing's worth. I get someone down here, and let's go from there, all right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything really worked as it should on this vehicle. So is there a market for these things? It's not like a, you know, a market for a Harley Davidson or something. Rick asks for the expert's opinion on the price of the item. 17,000, maybe 18,000. I would classify this one as nicer. It should go for more than that. So how much were you looking to get out of it? 22. Put a lot of money into it. But it's not an easy sell. I can give you 15 grand today. You walk away and it's done. I'd take 18 right now, my bottom line. Uh, I'm the one taking all the risks. I'll do 16,000. 16, five, I think I can make a deal. 16,000, that's what I could do. Okay, we have a deal. All right. I cannot wait to show this to the old man. <laughs> Rick is stunned by this Shelby GT 350. He knows it's worth he wants it. You gotta be kidding me. Shelby GT 350. How's it going? Good. How you doing? 1175 made total. The 67 is the best period. Carol Shelby envisioned the car. There was right around 100 modifications that Shelby did. It improved its performance, its handling, and its style. Got 63,000 original miles on the car. Yep, original four-speed top loader. And uh, he signed the glove box. That's definitely a plus, as far as I'm concerned. The owner makes his move and demands $125,000. But first, Rick needs an expert to examine it. So how much are you looking to get out of it? Skiing on the car is $125,000. I feel it's a fair price what I'm asking for the car. I'm going to call up a buddy of mine help me figure out the price. All so right. let me get him down here. He will know every single thing there is to know about this car. The expert takes the car on a test drive. He seems very pleased and values it at almost 110 grand. Nice. There it is, the Hypo 289, man. Pretty well kept engine bay. The difference right now is the test drive. <laughs> if we take it for a spin around the block, make sure there's no problems, everything's running right. That's okay, that's fine. Yeah, she's nice, man, she's real tight. What do you think it's worth? 100 to 110,000 bucks. 
Rick makes a quick offer and stays firm that it's up to the owner whether to sell it or keep it. What do you think? I think it's a great car. I'm not going to negotiate. I will give you 100 grand. That you might be able to do 105. Anything past 100 is doesn't make a dime of sense. All right, you got a deal. Sweet. Uh, Purchasing this sword. Oh, wow. Are you a closet samurai? <laughs> Rick and Chum Lee inspect the katana closely. There's a little excitement in here. Check out the blade on that sword. What have I taught you over the years? What have you taught me? Not to touch that with your hand. But what can you tell me about this, Chum? What do you know about it? It's pretty old. It looks pretty nice. An out of line boss once or twice in its time. An expert arrives to take a look at the katana before making an offer. So what do you think? Seen anything good? Very interesting. During the 1800s, a civil war going on. This blade in 1863 was given to the Lord of Choshu. Protect Japan. Okay, so question, what's it worth? Ten thousand dollars. Wow. And the negotiations begin. I have to make money on it. Five? Can you make money at that? I don't take advantage of people. Five thousand is just too low. I will give you six thousand dollars for it. Six thousand <laughs> is great. All right. Thank you. Mr. Harry Austin isn't very pleased by Rick's purchase, but Larry did a great job fixing it in the end. Well, what's up, Pops? What have you done this time? Bought a helicopter and I got it for 10 grand. Helicopter? Where in the hell are we gonna put a helicopter? Probably part the thing out and like double our money, or I can fix it and we'll have a badass helicopter. That is one of the stupidest statements I ever heard in my life. <laughs> I think we can make money on it. Nice. Well, if it hadn't been Rick, I'd have sold one of your kidneys. Basically, everything on there had to be rebuilt. I found a lot of reconditioned parts. I think it was the uh, salesman sample. He went from farm to farm. Okay, so we got the belt on here. Mind if I take this out? Because that's a little creepy. My kids have absolutely no appreciation for the wonder and mysteries of hit and miss engines. This was like the first gasoline motor that was commercially used. They started making these in the late 1890s. Farmers absolutely loved these things. Yeah. Rick explains what the engine is about. With those steam engines, so much fuel. Massively efficient. Once this thing's at speed, cruising along with these big flywheels, all the gas turns off. Really super simple design, and it builds up a charge. You do know about this. Can we fire it up? We can fire it up. <laughs> they even fire up the engine to see it working. It would lock and keep the exhaust valve open. Since the exhaust valve is open, we just cruise along and coast. Nerd, I mean, this is nerd heaven right here. I love this machine. I really doubt if it's a salesman sample. But do you know how much these completed models cost? I have the faintest idea. They talk about its price, and a deal is struck in the end. I would like to pay 1500 bucks for it. Far from a new model, I need to resell it. Can we move here to 2000 I'll tell you what, I'll give you 1800 it's more than a fair price. If you think it's fair, then that's that's LB. Okay, deal. thanks a lot, man. Um, let's go do some paperwork. And maybe I priced it too low. I'm glad to see that somebody appreciated it, got it, because I think that's gonna go home with it. Rick will meet Larry, who wants to show him a 1992 Schweizer helicopter. Days ago, I got a call from my buddy Larry. He's got a guy who wants to sell me one. Now, this aircraft was originally designed for the military about 1967, but it was actually designed to crash and be able to be fixed in the field so did the motor survive the crash? Oh yes, it did, $30,000 engine. So how much would it be just to rebuild the whole thing? 100,000. The retail value of this is about 150,000. Larry is throwing around some huge numbers, and that's scary. Rick meets the owner, who demands 10 grand for the helicopter. Without wasting a second, Rick buys it. What does she want for this thing? Take anything less than 10. Okay. All right, 10,000, it's a deal, man. Thank you, thank you very much. Before you start working on it, uh -huh. um, let me run this by my pops real quick. What do we got here? I have the first introduction of Thor is only in the mystery comic book. Okay. It's the first appearance of Thor in a comic book. All right, pretty cool. So you know when this came out? In 1962. Okay. Like who wrote this? Stanley Story, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko Art. So where'd you get this at? Oh, my brother. Great rating on it too. It's, you definitely have something here. The expert knows a lot, and it looks like the seller will have to lower the price. First things first, the CGC, the grading company here, they've done the heavy lifting for us. This book has white pages. That is astounding. That is a major selling point. What would it retail for? $60,000. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming down, buddy. All right, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Well, good luck. Thank you. It's a lot more than the 12 cents on the cover. Rick comes in once again with his lowball offer, but will the seller stand the test? Let's find out. Okay, so what would be your best price on it? $60,000. would not be the smartest business move to buy it for $60,000. I could sell it for that. But I'll give you thirty. dollars 50000 At 50000 there's no money in it for me. Commissions and everything else like that. If I sell it at an auction, there's auction fees. I'll give you 40 uh, Okay, I'll go 40 All right, sweet. Uh, you want to go right around? Yeah, come with me. This man called Corey to check out his race car. He explains that it is a hybrid between a trophy truck and a rock crawler. So what do we got? My Ultra 4 race car. It's kind of like a hybrid between a trophy truck and a rock crawler, right? 
The owner says this car takes a lot of time and money. To race Ultra 4 competitively, spend a lot of money and a lot of time. Can't have another hobby. He shows Corey and Chum how the car works. Top speed in it, what's that? 100 miles an hour. <laughs> you want to show me? Absolutely. Whoa. Woo! Awesome. Corey calls it badass and says he sees himself having so much fun with it. This thing is pretty badass. I could see having a lot of fun with this thing. That's why I'm only asking 50. I'll do 20. Could you do 42? 25. How about 27 and I throw in the trailer? We can do that. All right, it's a deal. Thanks. Dude, when are we taking this thing out in the desert? Like, I'd let you drive this. Hey, what's up, Scott? What's going on, Rick? I got you a grenade. Get that thing out of my store. I took it apart before I brought it in. How do you put it together? That's what I don't remember. <laughs> Rick looks at the grenade. Well, there's no um, boomy stuff inside of it. It's not every day that someone walks into my shop with a grenade. I consider that a good thing. So what do you know about it? It was either made by the OSS or the CIA 60 years ago. I've never seen a design like this. Looks like it'd be easy to throw, though. It's EKC means Eastman Kodak Company. Wow. Rick calls in an expert. Wow. Everything that comes in that is unusual or strange or old, they call me. The expert talks about the surprising history of the grenade. It is a grenade that was made for the OSS. It was the forerunner to CIA. This is James Bond stuff here. Old school James Bond. They made it look like a baseball. Every American boy can throw a baseball. This would normally be filled with TNT. Screws on this like that. Okay. And then this goes in like this. 43 people were injured during the testing. Three people died. How much did you pay? Five dollars. Five American dollars. Yeah. Okay. Rick, the last time I saw one of these, 2007. And it sold for over $2,000. Yeah, you did way good. Who's the man now, Rick? Apparently you are. This thing is beyond cool. Definitely want the damn thing. The buyer and Rick negotiate and come to a deal. So how much do you want for it? I'm thinking 16 now. I don't want to leave you a little money to make in it. So, yeah, 16. You can do that. All right. Let's go write it up. Sounds good. This man brought in a rocket engine that was used to train astronauts before they went to the moon. Howdy. Hey, what have we got here? I have a rocket engine that was used to train the astronauts before they landed on the moon. Rick thinks this is cool. The owner got it from a space auction. He also states his price. Super cool. Um, when they first built the lunar landing training vehicle, it wasn't that stable. As a matter of fact, pretty sure Neil Armstrong had to eject out of the thing when it crashed. I got this rocket engine from Edwards Air Force Base at a surplus auction. I'm asking for $20,000 because it was directly connected to the Apollo astronauts that went to the moon and came back. Rick talks about how it works, and the owner showed him the document that comes with documents and books to prove authenticity. One of the rockets from the lunar lander training vehicle removed from test vehicle number three. And it was never really talked about that. Crazy vehicle, it simulated the moon's gravity. Right around here, there was a valve. Shoot hydrogen peroxide down there, immediately reacts, creating 500 pounds of thrust. So right here we have... That's actually the paperwork by NASA. It has the vehicle number. You got pictures of it here in the yeah. book? Yeah. Engines are actually installed in a bank of four on the chassis. Uh, that's amazing. Rick asks how much he wants for it. How much do you want for it? 20,000. Flown rocket engines are very rare. I'll give you 10 grand for it. 16,000. I'll take a shot at 11,000. Can you do 15? I'll do 11,000. Congratulations, you've got yourself an artifact. So we got a deal. Okay, thank you. I'll meet you right over there. I didn't get my asking price. Do some paperwork and I'll get you paid. Now that it's gone, it's one less thing taking up space. A guy called me at the shop. He had a 1984 Ferrari back in the 80s, and I hope I can get it for a decent price. Rick sees the car and says it is incredible. I'm assuming you're the guy with the car. <laughs> you got it, huh? This is incredible. Tell me what you got. Well, we got a 1984 Ferrari 308 GTSI with the target top. Quattro valve. Magnum PI special. You bet. <laughs> the owner is a car collector, and he bought it two years ago from another collector. I'm a car collector. I bought the Ferrari from another collector in the Midwest about two years ago. Rick asks him to tell him about the car. The man tells him what he knows. Tell me all about it. It's all original paint, everything. The second year they make it into the four valve version and with a little bit more horsepower. Nothing. Okay, and how many miles got on it? 26. That's pretty amazing. I take 100, but 80 is good enough today. You take 60? Go 77 and a half. <sighs> 63,000. 70, we're gonna do this now. Top dollar 63. I can't go that low. I'm okay. sorry. You change your mind, you let me know. This woman brought in a Rolling Stone record to sell. What do you have here today? Two acetates, one with Aretha Franklin, one of Rolling Stones. Acetates weren't made to last. 
Chumley talks a bit about how they were made and their purpose. Every time you play them, they degenerate. There was a time when these were the premier way to record. He also talks about Aretha Franklin and the song in the record. The Queen of Soul. It was a modest hit. I like to sell them. The Aretha Franklin, 35000 The Rolling Stones, 25000 That's a lot of money. Hey, we're not going to be able to come to a deal today. Thanks for bringing them in. Have a good day. Take it easy. The most important piece of jewelry by a Las Vegas icon, Liberace. Rick saw the jewelry and made his comments. He asked the owner where he got this from. My grandma loved Liberace. So where did you get this? I got it at an auction. Liberace was a huge celebrity in his day. He was one of the biggest stars in Vegas. So to have one of his signature jewelry pieces would be absolutely amazing. The owner also brought a picture of him, Liberace wearing it, and a document. Here's a picture of him wearing it, and here's just a picture of him in front of the piano. See, he wore some suits. Oh, wow. Rick then asks how much the seller would like to sell it. How much you want for it? I'm looking for 25,000. I don't see 25 grand here, I just don't. I see 10. How much you get it for an auction? Uh, I didn't want to disclose that. 10 grand, I think it's a fair offer. Yeah, I can't do it. Well, thanks for bringing it in, man. Okay, thank you. This man brought in a book signed by Edwin Hubble. You're looking at an address book signed by Edwin Hubble. Best piece to ever walk in the pawn shop. Address book? Jimmy Hoffa's last known address? <laughs> the owner wants to use the money he gets from this to get himself a telescope. I think that is pretty cool. If I can get a deal done today, what I'm going to do is take some of that money and honor Hubble and buy myself a telescope. Rick talks about Edwin, how he discovered things, and how much impact his ideas have on the world. Edwin Hubble, I mean, amazing guy. No one knew about him until we put up the telescope in Spain. They just believed all the stars and all the planets and all the mass was in our galaxy, and basically there was nothing beyond that. Hubble came along and later discovered, hey, hey, this is the only galaxy. There's like a gazillion of them out there. You know, the universe is expanding. It changed the way we thought about physics and a whole lot of other things. And the fact that it's got Mount Wilson as his address, over the top nerd cool. He asks how much he wants. How much you want for it? For $8,000. Okay. I mean, I would give you three grand for it. Fair price. It's probably 6,500. I'll go 3,200 bucks. I mean, that is my best offer, really. I think it's really cool, so. Sorry, I just can't do it. I appreciate the offer, though. Have a good one, man. Thank you. I'm gonna take some time to find the right person, but I'm willing to wait. Kevin and I are in Southern California at an automotive museum. Ron Marconi has one of his personal vehicles he's to sell, Plymouth Barracuda. Rick sees another car, and he is amazed. The owner talks about how awesome the car is. Come on in, guys. Um, is that Knight Rider? This is Kit. The car would talk to you. Is that what I think it is? Michael Keaton, 1992, Batman Returns. Look, this thing is awesome. Rick tells Chum not to get distracted and shows him the car they were there for. It's cool, but this is what we came to see. 1971 Cuda. The pinnacle of the muscle car. It is the Zenith. I'm looking at selling my wife's 1971 340 Cuda. The car is fully equipped. It's got chin spoilers, a go wing, and a nice, healthy 340 motor. How much did you want for this thing? 90. You sure it wasn't 60? 80,000 is pretty much it. Will you do 70? I, I, I can't get that deep. And let me know if you change your mind. Let's go back to Vegas. So I'm here in New York to take a look at one of the most historical documents, an original Declaration of Independence broadside. And I'm about to take a look at one right now. Rick's in New York, hoping to get his hands on one of the rare copies of the Declaration of Independence. Definitely a wow moment. A wow um, moment, right. Extremely rare. July 1776, Declaration of Independence. Absolutely amazing. I think it was John Dunlop was a printer in Philadelphia. He basically takes a, a copy from Congress, writes it all out, then goes back to the print shop lays out his print and starts printing these. Uh, they think he printed right around 200 of them. When other printers around the country got a hold of them, they also made copies, and this is the New Hampshire one. I imagine your local tavern, when this was first penned up, there was a lot of people standing around going, damn. You can actually see the pinholes indicates that it was displayed publicly. Jeremy offers Rick a massive amount for these documents, but Rick needs an expert to price them. So how much are you looking for this? In exceptional condition, two million. Okay. I just want a document expert to look at it, okay? Fair. Because a little bit of knowledge can always get you in trouble, and that's what I got. Yeah, I am thrilled to see this. I'm Seth Caller, and an expert in important historic documents. Seth tells Rick that these documents are rare and can be worth $2 million. Normally, we'd have to take this out of the frame to authenticate it. I've actually seen this exact copy before. This to all of the known copies of the same broadside. Nail holes from uh, back then, which are not all handmade and different. All right, so, so I mean, it's 100% legit? Absolutely. All right, as tax, what is it worth? Beautiful copy. I think this could go for $2 million at auction now.
Negotiations begin. Will Rick be able to buy these ancient documents? I would love to give you like $1.4 million. I would sell it to you for $1.5 million. Okay. Uh, 1.45, I, I think that's fair. I, I think we can both be happy with that. I think we got a deal. Oh my goodness, I own the declaration. <laughs> got a call from my gallery and they two Louis Icard etchings. So I've called up Chad. Hey, how's it going? So where'd you get these? Got him at a sheriff's auction, Gove County, Kansas. Really incredible guy. He was literally the king of Art Deco, was painting in the 19-teens. Chad talks about Lewis's wife. That's his wife, right? It's Fanny Vollmer, 18 years old, working in a fashion house as a model. She turned into the muse. Anytime you see a blonde-haired, curly girl, you know it's Fanny. They weren't together very long before he got drafted in the military. Every time he had any downtime, sketch, whatever surface he could, whatever. Well, Fanny had found a publisher who would publish some. He got out of the military. He had a built-in fan base. Chad proceeds to take a closer look at the drawings and notices some red flags here and there. Okay, if these are real etchings, they'll be worth a lot of money. An etching is a copper plate that has okay. uh, an engraving into it. The few problems, that that's a photo printed of the piece, not hand signed. They're not etchings. How much did you want for these? 1700 for the pair. Between the two of them is $50. Thanks for bringing them in though. Thank you, Rick. No problem. Hey, how can I help you? I got a... This man walks in with a Wells Fargo artifact. To the pawn shop today to sell my strong box, ball and chain. I'm looking to get around $2,000. The man brings out the items in the box to show Rick. As they checked, he explains the origin of the artifact. This ball and chain right here uh, actually comes from the human prison. This one right here, it comes from Folsom Prison from around the late 1800s, 1900s. Rick's father explained how these artifacts came into existence. But Rick has a few concerns. Back in the day, a ball and chain kept prisoners from making a break for it. Here's my concerns. When they forged chains, it was just hot welding together. You know, get it hot, beat it together. It was all done by a blacksmith. That's why I have a problem with these chains. They're electrically welded. See how these have arcs from an arc welder? Never in the history of any prison did they ever have their name put on the balls. Rick calls it fake. Okay, so what are you trying to say? It's fake. The manufacturers who made these things weren't gonna change the die for every prison, but the box might be real. You have a box full of fake stuff, gives me real doubt about the box. This the man shows Rick and Mr. Harrison a rare record of Martin Luther King Jr. before his assassination. I got an original Martin Luther King Jr. album. Okay, where did you get this thing? I got in the state cell in LA. You mind me asking how much you paid? Actually, yes, yes I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a similar album appraised and sold for five thousand dollars right at about one month before he was assassinated he was a bestseller he was an incredible speaker as far as human rights go his most powerful tool is his voice and man could he speak it's in great shape I don't keep a high-end record player here. so the last thing i want to do damage this record by playing it on something cheap the seller offers three grands for it but rick negotiates and buys it for dollar 500 how much do you want for it between 25 and three grand no we're really far apart i'm assuming it's a lot rare extremely rare what would you be comfortable given to me like 500 bucks expected a lot more <sighs> that's all i can go you got a deal all right okay i'll take it i was looking more two three grand there's a hard market i was good with that this customer brought in john wayne's hat me again what's up man john wayne's hat from the man who shot liberty valance from liberty valance they have a short chat about the movie i mean it had some stars big time stars it's james stewart john wayne lee van cleef yep. lee marvin those four together kick the ass anybody in hollywood right now <laughs> this customer customer bought it from a collector, and now he wants to resell it. I bought it from a big collector. He didn't want to sell. I brought out a briefcase full of money. Hollywood just does not make movies like that anymore. Maybe Quentin Tarantino. Am I allowed to say that? Rick talks more about how awesome the John Wayne movie was and still is. John Wayne has so much tough guy swagger. And think about it. It's been up to 70 years. People still love him. So how much do you want for it? 95000 The movie was in black and white. It's hard to tell the colors match. Do you mind if I have someone look at this? Sure looks really good and the shape is good it doesn't look the right size to me he would have had to really mind if i put it on it should ears a problem it's a maybe I i'm skeptical and 95 grand we just can't pay it figure out a way to prove oh and you know i will <laughs> all right man appreciate it buddy all right what do we got here 18th century flintlock pistol used around the revolutionary war period got a lot of history to it i think it's a really good gun so why are you trying to get rid of it my wife is uh is kind of pushing me for it i love this gun it's like been the cream of my uh collection and where'd you get it i got it at a gun shop there was a seller there corey asks the price of the item and doubts the legitimacy of the pistol how much are you looking to get for it yeah, i'd like to get a grand a 
grand. Um, not that it wouldn't be worth a grand. I just don't know if it's real. I'd like to call in an expert. Well, this form of flintlock pistol made by the British, it's a smoothbore barrel, a range of about 20 to 30 feet. You know, it wasn't rifled. Your accuracy was not so good. What do you think it's worth? After evaluating the authenticity of the pistol, the expert suggests a price for the item. The deal takes a turn as it is revealed that the item is artificial. Anywhere between 15 and 2,500. Unfortunately, I know a reproduction. Um, it's a bit different in style. You're sure? 100%. The owner has a hard time facing the reality and gets infuriated. I paid 800 bucks for this. You, you got burned. I feel bad for the guy. I should have got the paperwork. My wife was pissed and now she's really going to kill me. First edition for whom the bell tolls by Ernest Hemingway and a framed autograph of Ernest Hemingway. That signature can be verified. I can easily sell them together for big money. I got a beautiful piece of Renaissance art. Who is it done by? Raphael. Sort of like walking in here, I have the Holy Grail.